WP Get Web Dev Tutorials for All User Levels. Okay, guys, so I just wanted to revisit the uh, image sizes in listing grids. I did a video a while ago showing a way of uh, managing that so that they're all the same height. Uh, and the method that I used then was using an additional plugin which created a image size for listing grids. Um, as we do things and we learn and we uh, progress, there's always new and uh, often better ways. So what I wanted to show you is what I've come up with as a way that I think is actually better. So what we're going to start with is a listing grid. A standard jet end listing grid. I'm going to add a listing which I've already created and I'll work through that a little bit shortly. Uh, so standard listing grid. Uh, I'm going to set it to, uh, where are we, equal height. So we've got equal height columns uh, and our listing grid. And straight away you see the issue that we've got where we've got, it's pulling these posts and they've all got different ratios of images. So what we want to have is have these all look the same size. There it is there. That's not what we want. We want all these to be exactly the same uh, dimensions. So the way I was doing it before was to create a uh, new image size in WordPress and use that image size in um, the listing grids. Turns out you don't have to do that. So what I'm going to do is look at one of these listings. So here's my listing grid here. So all I've got is a straight out section with a dark gray background, a single title and a single image. That's all I currently have in there. Now on this image, uh, what I'm going to do is add this class here, the listing-grid-image. I'm going to create a CSS rule which uh, changes the way these work. So if I head over to my site settings, I've already got it in here. I'm just going to comment it out, uh, uncomment it. So my custom CSS, up the top here, I've got some CSS rules that I've created. So if I just comment this out, uh, now on the right hand side here, you can see these are all F5 here. These are all perfectly the right size. Now I'm using exactly the same image. So what have we done here? All we've done is um, we set a fixed height on the image. So the listing grid image uh, class that I added to these images here. Uh, which is the wrapper, and then we want to look at the image inside that wrapper, which is the actual HTML image. I want to set the height uh, to a fixed height, set the width to 100%, set the object fit to cover. So what that's going to do instead of, if we don't do that, what happens is it squashes the image. See this girl on the right hand side here with the feet, see how squashed that is? If I set that to cover, it's no longer squashed. So what that does is when you set a fixed image height, uh, instead of squashing it, it uses the CSS positioning uh, rules for you know cover, uh, position, center, center. If I went that to top center, we're going to get the top of her feet over here. If I went to the bottom, I'm going to get the bottom of the image. Uh, if I go center, I get the center of the image. Now you could actually create some additional classes here um, and apply them differently to different images if you wanted to. So for example, you could add a meta tag, a meta field to a uh, post or a custom post, and you could call that the, um, you know, the, the thumbnail position. Uh, and you set the value on the thumbnail position uh, and fit, and you could actually, or actually probably just the position, uh, in this case, it's center, center, and what you can do is use a variable to add a class to that um, image. So each image can have its own either uh, top, center, or bottom, depending on what the image is, if you want to go to that extent. This is really, really easy because we don't have to create additional image sizes. We're just basically cropping the images that exist. And the other thing you might want to look at is what happens on the um, Breakpoints. So let's go to our, back to our listing grid. If I go to this breakpoint here, 
We've got three across. If I go to the mobile breakpoint, I've still got three across. Let's say we change that to being one across on mobile. We'll leave it to three across on uh, tablet. Uh, and we'll set it to, um, actually let's change that to two across so we can see what effect it has. So two across, we've got a very different ratio of image. So see this ratio is quite wide by 200 pixels high. That's pretty similar actually, but we could change it if we want to. And on mobile, it's quite, uh, quite narrow um, because we're only one across. So what we can do is go back to our CSS And in here, let's look at this media breakpoint I've created here for the mobile. And tablet, so I've got a media query, so the maximum width of 1024, so that's for the tablet. Uh, we want that for the maximum width of 767, which is the mobile. Um, let's say we want that to be taller. Let's say we want that to be 250 pix, or 240 pixels, or we wanna unset that. Um, we unset that, then we're going to get the full height of, of those images. So on mobile, we might put the full height so that we get the entire image. Uh, on tablet, we want, see that's 200 at the moment. Let's maybe change that to, say, 250. Oh, not 2,500. So now we've got these images cropped perfectly at different ratios on desktop, tablet, and mobile depending on how we want that to view. So our CSS simply here is to set the height, set the width of the image to 100%, object fit to cover, object position to center center. So that's the, um, uh, the vertical and horizontal. Horizontal I think is always gonna be center, um, but you can change this uh, to the vertical uh, position if you want to. Um, so that's pretty much all we're doing to crop and, and display the image on uh, tablet and desktop and on a tablet we want to set our height to 250 pixels so we got this being at 250 here and on our mobile we want to unset the height so that we get the full height of the image um, or we can do say say 300 px on mobile you know so we get a square like that um, Highly up to you, but it's it's a think a better way of doing it because we don't have to create an interim uh, image, uh, and you got full control of it anyway with the CSS rule, uh, object fit and object position. So I like this way of doing it. I think that's going to be my go-to rather than creating new image sizes. And I hope this uh, works for you as well. Okay, thank you.